So let's talk about what Cribble is and, and the kinds of problems that we solve. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, I've been at Cribble for two years. I've seen a tremendous amount of growth in the company. Uh, in May of this year, we closed our Series D round. Uh, we've raised a total of $402 million thus far, um, and that money has been well spent. Uh, building out global operations, we're uh, expanding into Europe uh, early next year, um, and we are the leader in what we call open observability. Our flagship product is an observability pipeline that sits between the sources and destinations of all of this observability data, security data, logs, events, metrics, and traces. Um, it is freely available, so you can run this in Cribble.cloud up to a terabyte a day without having to talk to anybody, which is awesome. Um, and there's no time limit on that. One terabyte a day, forever in the cloud. Um, in addition to the observability pipeline, we also have, uh, given this is a security audience, there's a pretty cool uh, tool that we have that is open source called AppScope. Um, and AppScope lets you do effectively instrumentation over any Linux binary without having to add instrumentation to your code. It effectively works as a shim between the application and system libraries. So we intercept everything that that application is doing, every file that it's opening, every network connection, every single byte of data that flows from that application somewhere else. Um, and what's interesting about that, at least the part that I think is interesting from a security perspective, is because we see the bytes before it hits something like libcrypt, we actually get clear text, right? We can get clear text out of something like, a, like an Okta client um, because we intercept everything before it hits the system call. All right, um, so we have been growing very quickly, 300% uh, year over year growth. Um, this shows no signs of slowing down today. Um, we have some great investors, as I've mentioned. Uh, most recent round was led by Tiger Global, Sequoia, IV, uh, IVP, CRV. Um, and we have a number of very, we tend to solve problems for very large companies, um, but we're also applicable to SMBs as well. Um, we have 10 of the uh, Fortune 50. I believe this number is going up. Here's some of the logos we can share publicly. Uh, we have a number of other case studies online you can explore uh, for other companies that we're, we're working with today. Um, TransUnion, one of our earliest um, uh, customers as well. And uh, we actually hired one of their folks. He's on my team as, a, as an evangelist. Um, this is 300 employees globally. Uh, we are well over that today. Um, and a lot of our, well, our three co-founders came from Splunk. Um, so they're very familiar with the challenges of all of this data and some of the issues that companies have and security teams have trying to solve the data challenges. And Jackie's going to talk more about that. All right, got some cool awards, cool vendor, Rising Star ISV Partner of the Year. Um, I think just last week we were named to CNBC's top 25 startups. Uh, so we're doing really well. A um, uh, number of awards from Comparably about the about working at Cribble, employee experience, and so on. Uh, so it's a company that people really want to work at. They enjoy working, uh, working there. And our customers enjoy working with us, uh, which has really been gratifying, really solving some of these challenges. So with that, what do we do? Well, our story is that you know, we want to restore choice and control over all of your observability data. And I'll talk about why this is a challenge. Data is growing at anywhere between 23 to 25% year over year. The problem is that your budgets are not growing at an equivalent rate. And even if they were, not all that data is very interesting. Um, but you often don't get to decide right, what's interesting or not until you ingest all of this data and you've ex you You've paid for it, whether it's through software licensing, through infrastructure that you have to deploy and manage. Um, and so this is really putting significant strain on security teams, observability teams, IT operations, SREs. And so these systems are at capacity, right? Whether you're paying for daily ingest or you're, you've got some kind of workload-based pricing, it is getting incredibly expensive for you to try to grow your data footprint at 23% a year. And that's not just the software licensing. There's also all the infrastructure, whether it's in the cloud where it's supposedly free, it's not, um, or that is on-prem 
disk arrays that you're still purchasing and, and deploying and managing. And then how do you actually retain all of this data, right? Whether it's for GDPR, any other kind of privacy law, uh, if you want to do incident response or any kind of investigations after the fact, you're talking about storing a tremendous amount of data. And we hear this regularly, right? Like it gets close to the end of the month. I'm starting to hit, get near my, my capacity. I'm going to shut off high volume data sources just because I can't pay to keep them anymore. And it, this is a quote from one of our customers, right? We have so many things we have to onboard. It's 5x the capacity that we actually have. And the traditional model for how this data gets ingested is not flexible enough. Customers are, they don't have the choices over where they want to put data, what kind of format that data needs to be in, and they don't have any control over where that data is going to land and live. All right. And the other challenge here is that data management tooling continues to evolve, right? There is no single pane of glass. There is no one platform that is going to solve all of your challenges. If anything, the opposite is true, right? When we survey people, we see that, you know, most people are using 30 or more different tools in the security space. And now with cloud operations teams effectively saying, you know, we're going to run that stuff ourselves in the cloud. Now you're seeing even more tools that are coming up. So each one of these, whether it's object storage, whether it's a data warehouse, a data lake, uh, whether it's a logging analytics platform, APM, your SIM, every single one of those requires some kind of bespoke agent that you deploy either on every single instance on-prem or in the cloud, and you have to manage each of those. You want to deploy a new tool, congratulations, you get to deploy 50,000 or 100,000 or 200,000 new agents and configure all of them, and each one of those potentially introduces their own security challenges, uh, their own manageability challenges, maybe a dedicated configuration language. So it's just this continued sprawl over how do staff actually deal with this stuff. All right, so where do we fit, right? There's the problem. This is effectively what it looks like today. And I've, I've had conversations with large banks. They're like, you know what? I got, got 90,000 servers on-prem. Uh, I'm running 24 agents on each one of them. And so each one of those agents effectively talks to one destination, right? And it does not allow you to drop data, reduce the amount of volume that you're sending on, uh, route things to multiple destinations, and so on. So this becomes, you, you effectively build a data silo with every agent you deploy and every platform you want to use. And this is where we decided to get in the middle, right? Computer Science 101, you hit a problem you can't solve, introduce an abstraction. Triple Stream is that abstraction over all of this security data, all of this observability data. It is a universal collector and receiver of logs, events, metrics, and traces. It allows you to route data from one place to multiple destinations in the right format. You can enrich data. So if you want to reach out to an IOC database and say, oh, this, this event looks like it, it carries elements of compromise, um, you can do that as well. If you want to add GOIP information, you can also filter data out. Right? One really good use case here from TransUnion is around DNS data. They wanted to store all of their DNS uh, queries, but it was a terabyte a day of data, and they just did not have the budget for that. So using Stream, what they did is they filtered out the top 2,000 domains. I don't care if somebody's going to Yahoo. I care if they're clicking on a link and they're going to some weird Russian website, right? So that one terabyte a day got filtered down to 50 gigabytes a day, which is much more cost effective to manage, and it's also a better data product, right? I'm executing much more meaningful queries over data in any of these destination platforms over that 50 gigabytes than I would be over a terabyte of data. Also allows you to reduce that volume, right? If you're dealing with like Windows events, um, just chopping out white space or converting things from XML to JSON can result in anywhere from a 30% to an 80% reduction in volume per data type. So if you are paying one of your log analytics vendors on a daily basis, on daily ingest, and let's say you're licensed to 10 terabytes a day, 
and you can reduce that volume by 30 to 80%, you have a tremendous amount of headspace that you can now put new data types in. Whereas before, you did not have that kind of control. In addition, we've also introduced, uh, this is something uh, we're gonna talk about later, is Cribble Search. So Universal Collector, you can uh, redact sensitive data, you can filter uh, data out, and you can reduce volumes. And lastly, you can replay data. So if you want to save your data in low cost object storage, you can route a copy either of the raw data or the process data to an S3, to a MinIO, to a Cloudian, et cetera. And then later on, you can choose to restream that data back through, either applying the same rules, or the same processing rules or different rules and send it to the same or a different destination. So this puts you back in control over maybe your compliance copy of your data or backups or anything like that. And then you get to decide in the future, what do you do with that stuff? All right. Haven't we seen this movie before? Well, no, not really. Um, you know, typically people talk about, I'm gonna build this myself, um, cobbling together various open source components. Um, the challenges there are multiple. One is integration. Um, my background, as I mentioned, is data analytics. I will die on the hill that integration is the hardest problem in IT or security. And so how do you link all of those things together how do you get visibility into their performance if something goes wrong, et cetera? But mostly, you know, how do you get all the protocol support that you need in, say, you know, a message bus or any of, any of those other tools? Um, understanding the data itself, right? These products that are these projects that a lot of people want to try don't understand the data that they're dealing with. Um, and then also scalability challenges. Many products or many projects are stateful by nature, so they require a tremendous amount of hardware and often specialized expertise to keep them up and running. So Cribblestream is a purpose-built product for security and observability data. All right, so what does this let you do? Number one, because we're an abstraction, we really do some amazing things for vendor lock-in here, right? Or even de-risking upgrades. Right? If there's a new product you want to try or a new version of a product you want to try, you can simply send that data to both destinations, maybe in a different format, maybe with different enrichments being applied, et cetera. But this lets you have a much more pointed conversation with some of your vendors than you would be able to otherwise because you can, you, you've, you've got that abstraction layer between sources and destinations. There was some interesting research from Ponmon Institute a few years ago uh, around the cost of security data engineering. The average organization spends about $3 million a year on people costs just getting data in, right? And this takes months to get a new data source onboarded. We can reduce that time to days or even hours. So you spend less time with kind of tedious work and much more time being able to use that data and actually doing security work, what you're paid to do. Um, and so we feel like this gives you, because you have so much more choice and control over all of these different data sources, you can reduce the volumes so that you can actually observe more because you're freeing up headspace for those destinations. You can route data to multiple destinations as well. And this lets you maximize your investment in your security and observability tooling. All right, so what do we got? What's on, what's on the truck for us to sell? Uh, Cribble Stream, I've just talked about that. Uh, Cribble Edge, Corey's going to talk about these two things in a minute. And then also we're going to show a demo of Cribble Search. So Cribble Search is our search in place product offering. So instead of having to move data before you actually analyze it, you can perform a search over, you can effectively look for the needle in the haystack without having to move the whole haystack. You can also search over data at rest as well stream for processing and routing of all of this data, and then Cribble Edge for collection at scale. Cribble Edge is kind of, if you want to rethink what an agent can be, a software agent can be, that's where Cribble Edge comes in and also bundled with AppScope, our instrumentation tool. Another thing I want to talk about is education at Cribble. Um, we are committed to having free education for anyone. Um, so we offer two certification levels today, Cribble Stream User, Cribble Stream Admin. We're continuing to expand 
our certification program. So you can go get certified today on this, um, and we're committed to free education for life and free certifications for life at Cribble.